This is a ring of DNA that comes out of bacteria. It's called a plasmid. It's circular DNA loop. Um, restriction enzymes, and here's my restriction enzyme called scissors. Restriction enzymes can also cut the rings of DNA that come out of bacteria. So we're going to use a restriction enzyme. We're going to cut the plasmid here. And after we do the cut, I get this, right? Now I could take some human DNA and I could, let's say there was a gene that made pimples in a human. I could cut the pimple gene out of the human DNA and if I use the same restriction enzyme, cut, cut, cut on each side of that gene, it's going to make sticky ends that are going to match the cut I made in the plasmid. And I'm going to insert the human gene for pimples. So now I have DNA from a bacterium with a little section of human DNA. This is called recombinant DNA. There are many things I could do with this. I might could insert this into a tomato plant using the bacteria as a vector and grow pimples on my tomatoes. If I, in another situation, let's say, instead of creating the gene for pimples, I created the gene for human insulin, which is a very important medical uh, uh, necessity for people that have diabetes. I could then insert that gene for human insulin into a plasmid. Then I could take this plasmid and put it back inside a bacterium and allow the bacteria to clone itself and make millions and billions of copies in like petri dishes. And guess what? The bacteria, since they would have this gene for making human insulin, would start making insulin. And then I could give that to patients that needed human insulin to treat their diabetes. So the idea of using restriction enzymes to cut DNA, whether you're cutting it out of a person and splicing it into a bacterium or cutting it out of a corn plant and splicing it into a soybean plant, is very, very cool.